When you're a storyteller, most of the time you're working on your own and that will either appeal to you or drive you crazy. But every now and again you will have the opportunity to be able to work with a storytelling partner in what we call tandem telling, you know, like when you're on a bicycle, two people riding together. And tandem telling has its own rewards and challenges. So let me just deal with the, a couple of the challenges straight off the bat. Uh, and that is the first thing is that you've got to one find your partner and then two when you've found your partner you've actually got to sort of find time when your two schedules coincide so that you can actually get together and rehearse. One of the great joys of being a solo storyteller is that you can rehearse anytime, anywhere. You know, even when you're in the bathroom there and having a shower you can be going through the, the story and, and how you're going to tell it. So it's really important that you have someone, one that you like being with and that you want to tell the story together with and that you can find the time to decide how we're going to divide this story. What is the way that we're going to share this story and what is your role and what is my role? And what having a partner uh, does for you, uh, one is that it allows you to be more dramatic, that where you have, for example, two characters in the story and they're having some dialogue with each other, so that becomes natural for you. It almost comes like a little play, a little scene uh, within itself. Um, and that can change the, the pace and the feel of the story. And when you're working with uh, a partner, if you are the kind of person, if you're perhaps a little less experienced, it may be reassuring for you to know that you know, the audience is now split and the, there are only like you know, 20 pairs of eyes watching you and 20 pairs of eyes are watching your partner. And should it happen that you dry and you can't remember what on earth comes next, then your partner is there to kind of get you out of it and help you to get back on track. So let's come back to thinking about the questions that you need to decide as you start to work on your tandem story. Uh, first of all, consider your partner. What are their particular strengths? What do they bring to the performance which are hopefully different and complementary to what you yourself bring? So it may be, um, for example, that the, your partner is very good at singing or plays a musical instrument or uh, I work with uh, Gopinathan who is a wonderful uh, mime artist, has a great sense of uh, comedy, very happy with uh, improvising and uh, he happens to be deaf so of course that means that he will be signing and I will then use voice and sign and that just makes our the stories that we've told together become very visual in the way that we want to present them uh, and the idea of trying to uh, introduce to our audience different signs that are part of the story this is an important um, feature of the way that we tell the stories. So when you are thinking about your, how the two of you could work together and, and try and meld those uh, different skills into the performance, maybe your partner's very good at uh, doing the visuals or the craft, that kind of thing. So make sure that you can showcase those. When you're working with a partner, it does mean, uh, in some circumstances, for example, that one of you could concentrate more on the narrative and telling the story while the other is perhaps manipulating the props or the puppets or whatever else or is more responsible for handling the audience interaction, yes, while you are then dedicated, one of you is dedicated to the idea of focusing on the narrative. As you start to work on the story, it's important that you look for those moments where the characters, and I would usually choose uh, for a tandem story, a, a story with two or three characters, you don't want really, you know, a, a, to do the whole of the Mahabharata because you just have hundreds, possibly thousands of people, which <clears throat> becomes challenging. Um, to look for those moments where the characters will have an interaction where there's dialogue and to try and advance the story as much through dialogue as you can because dialogue uh, can give one the information what is going on uh, two it will suggest character the kind of words that I use uh, three the kind of voice that I'm using for my character as opposed to your character uh, will add some variety and it also means that perhaps the characters are speaking with the different rhythms and pace so this will all add uh, interest and variety in the story 
So it's important to remember to keep the narration going and don't just have the dialogue, that you need to let the audience know where this is happening and set the locale. Apart from remembering to keep the audience informed of what's happening in the story, it's also important when you're working with a partner that you remember to share the story with the audience. And what happens, I've actually brought my um, Chinese grandmother. Hello, Grandma. Oh, hello, Roger. How are you doing? I'm very well, thanks, Grandma. Oh, I'm very pleased to hear that. Yes, uh, and I've also brought along my nephew. Hi, Uncle, how are you? Uh, I'm fine, thank you. Oh, good. Hi, Grandma. Hello, Lenny, how are you? Oh, very good, thank you. Uh, good, good, good. Now, uh, what often happens is that as they're telling the story, uh, one day, a little red riding hood, uh, no, Grandma, uh, I'm little blue cake boy. Oh, yes, that's right, little blue cake boy came to see his grandma. That's right, I flew through the air and I didn't have to go through the forest, so I got there without meeting the wolf. <laughs> It's a very short story. The end. Uh, did you see what happened? When they were telling the story, they were talking to each other like this, and they completely ignored you. So it's very important that when you're telling the story, uh, the person who's actually um, speaking really, ideally, should be facing the audience. And that way, uh, two things. Uh, they can see you, uh, and if you notice, my nephew, Lenny, he's looking at me. Aren't you, Lenny? Uh, yes, I am. That's right. Uh, and now you can see that Grandma is looking at me. So anybody who's watching will look at her and see that she's looking at me, so they're also going to look at me. Pretty clever, huh? Uh, yes, I think it is rather clever, you see. So it's a bit like the old, um, uh, what do you call it, those clocks. Uh, Swiss clocks, Grandma. Yes, that's right, the Swiss clocks. Yes, the Swiss clocks. And uh, uh, I turned, yes, and you turned out, and you turned out, and I turned out, and you turned in, and I turned out like that. Uh, of course, if we're having a, a, a big argument, uh, where have you been, boy? I'm sorry, Grandma. You're very late. I'm sorry about that, Grandma. Then, of course, uh, we do need to face each other because it looks rather silly if we don't. Uh, because uh, it does look very silly too, doesn't it, Grandma? If we are talking to each other like this, but we aren't really talking to each other, we're only talking to the audience. Uh, yes, it also becomes rather difficult because I don't know when you've stopped or what you're doing if I don't occasionally have a look at you. So, important thing is, when you're talking, most of the time face the audience, and when you're listening, uh, uh, then you actually face your partner. All right? Good. Well done. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. See you later, Uncle. There'll be times in the story when you perhaps want to speak together. It might be, for example, the opening and you both say together, once upon a time, or at the very end, you both say, and they lived happily ever after. Uh, and that possibly you, you come to also not just speaking together, but that also you work together to make some kind of a visual image that would be connected to the story. Um, and again, when you start, think about are you both on the stage or does one person enter and then the second person follows them? Apart from your physical relationship with one another, uh, also do think about your emotional relationship with the other teller. And this may be, I mean, if you're working with somebody regularly, then that's possibly something that you also want to kind of frame as well, so that you always know when the two of you find a name for what you are as you perform because this is a unique identity that you are so uh, I used to perform as the see here storytellers uh, when I first started working with Dennis Tan who my deaf my first deaf partner um, so think about what is your relationship are you going to be like um, siblings who are good friends uh, perhaps rivals uh, perhaps there could be a master-servant relationship in which often the master thinks he knows, but the other character, the servant, is actually far more uh, with it than the master realizes. Uh, it may be, for example, that one is much more refined and wants to get the detail and be absolutely correct, and the other is much more spontaneous and playful and tends to misunderstand and get things wrong. And this can be one a way of adding comedy, but also a way that you can add explanation into the story. And without making it being forced, it just comes from the fact that this idiot next to you uh, doesn't know this particular word and either needs clarification or he uses 
in a, another word that he thinks is the same. So we were doing the story the other day, uh, and I was playing a magistrate, and the young woman that I was working with said, "Your Majesty," which was it was just very nice that the magistrate, Majesty. Um, and so it just gave us a little bit of comedy that we then uh, kept in the actual performance, something that had come from the rehearsal. So think about what is your on-stage relationship and don't just come out and I am a storyteller and I am a storyteller. Why? Why are you doing this? Why are you telling this together? Maybe it's your, your great friends, okay? Uh, maybe it's because uh, they're from one culture and you're from another culture and you wanted to share this story and it's great if this story comes from your culture and then this person may not understand and it would be natural for them to ask questions and you can then explain, okay? Uh, about things and uh, there could be misunderstandings as part of the way that you tell the story. Uh, tandem works very well also if you want to work bilingually. So uh, um, for example my next project is to do a bilingual telling of Puss in Boots, Le Chat Boot, which is in French and English uh, and so it's just again a, a different um, dimension to the story and again we have to think the way we tell the story will change if it is a prominently English speaking audience or if it is a native French speaking audience and English is their second language. So the, again the way that we tell the story, the, the preponderance of narration will switch to the mother tongue of the audience but we still need to make sure that the non-native speakers can follow the story. When you're working with your partner, do think about um, those moments perhaps when you want to speak or move together, right? Uh, the very opening of the, sh of the story. Are you both on stage or does one person come out and start to tell the story and then when you either bring in the second character um, that your partner enters uh, or it may be uh, I've done it where uh, I start off the story and then my partner comes in and they, they, they're in a bit of a panic because they haven't got the right props or they can't find and something's missing. Okay, uh, and so we now have to make an adaptation. Oh my goodness me. So we need someone now to come out and to be the king for the, you know, the opening scene. And so we've got, we've got a member of the audience up and we're feeding them the lines of dialogue or whatever. Um, because our third person has been delayed on the expressway because of a traffic jam or something. So uh, these are all choices that you can make. Uh, do you end the story uh, together and you both say in unison and they lived happily ever after and with a particular gesture that will somehow complement or you create an image which fits with the story. If it was a uh, a man and a woman and you know so white then the two of you are having a little hug and an embrace or something uh, or it could be if it's you know parent and child and the, the child is then um, being cuddled by the parent or whatever you know you find a way to end the story rather than just we say the lines and we've finished you need to think about it there's a visual element there because you are working with a partner